we know that only mainstream finance can, f uh, can fund the estimated $100 trillion of investment needed over the course of the next three decades for a clean energy future. Now, sometimes these numbers are so big it's hard to keep perspective, but that's two additional percentage points of global GDP every year, year in, year out, for three decades in every corner of the world. So when the UK assumed the COP presidency in partnership with Italy two years ago, that time there was about $5 trillion of private financial assets committed to being managed to net zero. And as you've heard today as part of GFAN's over 450 major financial institutions from 45 countries are committing to manage their balance sheets, balance sheets that total over $130 trillion in line with net zero. So make no mistake, the money is here if the world wants to use it. GFANS covers the entire waterfront of finance, banks, insurers, pension funds, asset managers, export credit agencies as of today, stock exchanges, credit rating agencies, index providers, auditors. These are the best in finance that are committed to making the transition to net zero a reality. And GFANS is the gold standard for net zero. All members have followed rigorous internal governance processes to make their commitments, commitments that will reshape their business models to fund the sustainable transformations of our economies. And GFAN's members haven't just committed to net zero financed emissions by 2050 at the latest, although they have. They also target their fair share of the 50% greenhouse gas emission reductions by 2030 that are needed to keep the world on track for one and a half degrees. And they're using the most stringent and rigorous science-based scenarios to set out detailed five-year emissions reduction plans, and every member will report their progress annually. GFANS is underpinned by the UNFCCC's Race to Zero. There's an independent expert peer group of academics, scientists, and NGOs that ensure that all criteria are met and that governance is followed. A GFAN's advisory panel of 20 independent experts from around the world and seven NGOs convene the subsector alliances of GFANS and they guide and scrutinize its work. And as you will hear shortly, GFANS will work closely with the official sector, including the FSB to build a global financial system that's focused on achieving net zero. Now, a critical issue is how do we use the enormous financial resources and the relentless focus of GFAN's members to unlock the $1 trillion of additional annual investment needed for the net zero transition in emerging markets and developing economies. Doing so will require a radical new approach to mobilize private finance at this unprecedented scale. Specifically, we need new country platforms that combine ambitious country climate plans that bring them together with GFAN's financing commitments, and you'll hear more specifics about those financing commissions from Shamara later, combining them as well with catalytic initiatives from the private sector, such as the CFLI and fast infrastructure, as well as the expertise of the multilateral development banks in the IMF. These country platforms should deploy new structures of blended finance at scale and with high multipliers, as Larry Fink and others have emphasized, connecting private finance with Paris-aligned projects and managing the wind-down of those stranded assets. So to conclude, finance is no longer a mirror that reflects a world that's not doing enough. It's becoming a window through which ambitious climate action can deliver the sustainable future that people all over the world are demanding. It will help end the tragedy of the horizon. And with the best in finance stepping up, there are new opportunities for companies and countries to raise 
their ambitions to tackle deforestation, to end the use of coal, and to phase out fossil fuels and dramatically reduce methane. There's fuel for finance, or there's finance to fuel the race to zero's breakthrough ambitions from affordable green power to zero emission steel and low carbon hydrogen. And finance can fund investment driven, as Sri Mulyani emphasized, by cre credible and predictable government policies. Through the new window of finance, such initiatives give finance the confidence to invest, pulling forward the adjustments in our economy, smoothing the transition to net zero, and critically driving growth and jobs upwards while they force emissions downwards. With GFANS, we have all the money needed for the transition. Our job is to have the plumbing that helps put it to work. I'll pass back to you, Gillian. Thank you very much.